lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. For the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Bethel family. The word of God said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace so that we can obtain mercy in time of need. The altar belongs to you. Come, come, come on, come unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father God, we thank you. We praise you, God, for who you are. You are the king of glory. You're mighty and strong in battle. So in obedience to your word, God, we lay aside every sin and every weight. We lay aside, oh God, every heartache and every disappointment. We cast our cares upon you because you the one that care for us. Have your way in this sanctuary tonight. Have your way, Father God. Set your people free and deliver them, oh God. Let the glory of the Lord fall fresh upon this temple. In the name of Jesus, oh God, give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying. God, we declare and decree that we lay aside everything that's not like you. Purge us and cleanse us, oh God, so that we can be transformed by the image of Jesus Christ. Heal, Father God. Set free, Father God. Deliver, Father God. Renew, Father God. Fill us, oh God, with your power and with your anointing. You are, oh God, our help in time of trouble. There's nobody like you. So we worship you. We praise you, oh God. We give you all the glory for you. You alone are worthy, oh God. Have your way and be thy glorified in this temple, Lord. Yet your Shekinah glory fall fresh upon us, oh God. Be glorified in everything we do and everything we say. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. For this day, Lord, we come to you with an open heart and a humble spirit, God, recognizing you as our source and our strength, God, giving you thanks for undeserved grace and mercy, Lord. So, Father, we repent right now for our sins, Lord. We empty ourselves out right now as that you fill us up anew, God. Refresh us, revive us, comfort us, and counsel us, God, as only you can through your Holy Spirit and through your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. God, we do not take this day for granted, Lord, because whether we know it or not, there are those that did not see this day, Lord. There are those that are seeing this day but did not want to see this day. So strengthen us and give us this day, our daily bread, God, so we may operate in spirit and truth, God. So we may operate in excellence, God. So that we may operate in love, God. The love that you show us. The love that you showed us on Calvary, God. So we pray blessings over this sanctuary. We call this holy ground, Lord. We spiritually take off our shoes, God, and lay down at your throne, God. Recognizing that you are the source for everything that we need, Lord. We know that you are working for us. You are working through us, God. And you are giving blessings to us, not just for ourselves, God. So we ask that our cup runneth over, God. That our finances run over. That our peace runs over. That our grace and mercy runs over. And our love runs over. So that we may share it with the world. So that they not only hear our words, but they see our walk. They see our talk. They see our countenance, God. So have your way in this service, Lord. We ask that strongholds be broken. We ask that deliverance come through in this place, Lord. We ask these things in the priceless, the peerless, the perfect name of the master with whom we serve. In the name of Jesus, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. To the most high God. We exalt you this morning, oh God. We lay before you, oh God. We believe your word to be the truth, oh God. And another we will not follow, oh God. Open our ears to hear you, God. We have prayed a prayer of repentance, oh God. Our hearts are prepared, oh God. We want deliverance and healing. Heal us from all sickness and sin, oh God. Your word said Jesus bore it all for us. At the end, he said, it is finished. So God, it is finished. When Jesus is finished in us, 
We bind everything that's trying to hinder us from serving a mighty God. We bind every sickness that comes to afflict us in the name of Jesus. We pray for our minds, our, our lungs, our heart, our kidneys, and our, our, um, our kidneys. And God, we pray for our organs and our body, oh God. If one of them go down, God, then we cannot function, God. So we declare, declare oh God, that we'll eat healthy, God. You will give us divine wisdom and strategy. We will seek after you in all things, oh God. We will not bow, bow down to the adversary, oh God. We thank you for healing this morning. We declare healing, oh God. We declare miracles, oh God. Man say one thing, God, but you say another. God, we see your miracles at work every day, oh God. You woke us up this morning, oh God. Miracle. Hallelujah. Thank you for every need being met, even right now. Signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow the word of God. Jesus, he bore it all. We trust you, Lord. We adore you, God. We thank you for the deliverance, oh God, from every addictive spirit. We bind the hand of the enemy, and we release, release the love of God. We release you, Lord. Have your way in our lives, oh God. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. We give your name the praise. There is none like you in all the earth. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? You are fearful in praises, and you are still doing wonders. We take apostolic authority over every unclean spirit, over every heavy weight. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we decree and declare that the spirit of liberty and freedom is here. We bind every mind-binding spirit in the name of Jesus. Anyone under the sound of my voice that has been battling depression, that has been battling anxiety, that has been battling rebellion in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that you are not welcome here, you unclean and vile spirit. And we serve you an eviction notice today. We decree and declare every stone of hardness and offense and bitterness and disunity is broken now, is shattered now in the name of Jesus. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless, be our glory, honor, dominion, and power now henceforth and forevermore. Spirit in this room. Oh, I, I'm longing for you get the glory out of all things. I'm thirsty for anybody thirsty for his presence. I want your glory. I need your glory. of me and more of you is what I need. Anybody want more of his glory? I want your glory. I need your glory. Less of me and more of you is 
is what I need. Can we declare it all over the room? I want your glory. I need your glory. I need your glory. And it's less of me. Less of me and more of you is what I need. Hey, I want your glory. God, you can come down right now. I need your glory. Less of me. Less of me and more is what I need. I need some people to declare, I want your glory. Yes, I need your glory. Less of me. Is what I need. Last time all over the room. I want your glory. I need your glory. Less of me. Can we lift up the name of Jesus higher? Let me hear your worship all over the room. Send a praise to our Savior. And as you're yelling, go ahead and say higher. Higher. Where do we want to go? Higher. God, you get the glory. You get the honor. God, you get the praise. Ha! Everybody clap. Ha! Son, the class is real simple. I will lift up your name. Higher. I will lift up your name. Higher. Great Jehovah. Great Jehovah. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. I will. I will lift I will call on the name of Jesus. I will call on the name of Jesus. Great Jesus. Great Jesus. Great Jesus. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. I, will. I will call on your name, Jesus. Hey, now I'm going to give you a chance because I know we ain't sung it in a while, but we'll start again. Listen, I will lift up your name. I will lift up your name.
So 
will call on the name Jesus. Jesus. I will call on the name of Jesus. Great Jehovah. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. Great Jehovah. Great Jehovah. You are. You are wonderful. Great Jehovah. Great Jehovah. You are. You are wonderful. Great Jehovah. Great Jehovah. the name Jesus. Now all over this sanctuary and even at home, can you lift up a praise for the name of Jesus? Come on, open up your mouth and lift up a praise for the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is the Lord of all to the end of the earth. Somebody ought to shout the name Jesus. At that name, demons tremble. At that name, sickness flees. At that name, doors are open. At that name, victory is won. Come on, shout his name one more time. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. And oh, how I love Jesus. Come on, help me this morning. Oh, how I love Jesus. Come on, let me hear you. seats in the very presence of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. 
and we make the choice to rejoice and we're glad in it. Hey, do me a favor, just in case you sat next to somebody and you were deep in meditation and you forgot to speak to them, speak to your neighbor on your right and your left. <laughs> just, you know, just in, you know, just in case you were deep in meditation. You forgot. You forgot to speak to him because you know you were in you were in medication. And I want you to make sure you speak to your neighbor when you're running. Now turn all the way around. Somebody's looking at the buckshots in the back of your head. Turn all the way around and speak. Somebody said, I ain't got no buckshots. My wig is covering it. Turn around and speak to him anyway. Turn around, turn around and speak to him anyway. <laughs> Man, if you can't laugh in the Lord, I tell you, that's a pitiful thing, isn't it? The joy of the Lord ought to include laughter every now and then. What an amazing Resurrection Sunday we had last week. Did not, if you were here sunrise, did not the Father of our house bless us? Can we salute? our pastor emeritus this morning and honor him yeah we bless god for him yeah we celebrate and salute our mother she is doing well we thank god for the mother of our house she is doing quite well and the beautiful woman in the room the most beautiful my my baby, our first lady, our executive pastor. Come on, we salute her. Yeah. She came like Rihanna this morning, shining bright like a diamond. <laughs> it's just good to be in the house of the Lord. It's just good to be alive. Anybody just glad to be alive? I'm talking about I'm just glad I'm alive. So we prepare now, just a week after celebrating his resurrection. He left us with not simply a memorial, but a remembrance and a reminder and really a refresher that we not, ought not ever forget that his body got broken. And his blood got shed. Lord have mercy. Did you hear what I just said? We ought not ever forget. He said, I don't want you to ever forget that I shed my blood for you hmm. on the cross of Calvary. Without the shedding of blood, the Bible tells us there is no remission of sin. Anybody other than me glad he satisfied the penalty for your sins? And so, as is our custom every first Sunday, we remember his sacrifice and we refresh our faith. And we are thankful. You should have, on the way in, received or picked up a receptacle that had that which represents our Lord's body. If you did not receive one or did not pick one up on the way in, if you could just slip your hand in the air, our deacons and our, our ushers, all right, our dancers right over here, thank you. If you did not get one, our deacons are standing ready. Thank you, deacons, so much. Just put your hand up. I see one hand right here right up under there thank you so much keep waving your hand they'll get you I see two hands I see another hand right up here thank you so much hallelujah and then may I though as he was my sin. 
Come on, there is a fountain. Everybody. There is a fountain. Yeah. Drawn from. Drawn from. Emmanuel. Yeah, and sinners. Beneath, Lord have mercy. Lose all the guilty stain. Come on, everybody, stand as we prepare to partake. Lose all, lose all the guilty stain. Sinner's blood and sinner's blood be me. Lose all their gift. Come on, one more time. Lose all. Lord have mercy. Come on, let me hear you. Sinner's blood. Sinner's blood. night in which our Lord was betrayed the word of the Lord says around the table with those disciples he took bread and broke it he blessed it and broke it I bet not do that if you were here Wednesday night he blessed it <laughs> he blessed it and broke it so he could expand it I better leave that alone he breaks you to expand you. As he told those disciples we do right now, let us all eat together. Somebody ought to just yell, break me to expand me. The blood. <laughs> Anybody know it was the blood? One day when you were lost, he died upon that cross. Look at somebody tell him, and I know it was the blood. Y'all better 
As he said unto those disciples, I say unto us, let us all drink together. Somebody ought to shout like you're glad about it. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it. Oh, come on, let's have a little old church. One day when I was lost, he died. The deacons are moving amongst you to pick up your receptacles like the deacons. Well, I just know it was. Let me hear you. I know it. I know it. him in the side they pierced him in Lord have mercy they pierced him well one day yes sir Of church, the blood came streaming. The blood came streaming. The blood came streaming. Well, one day, yes, sir. the verse I used to like. He never said a mumbling. He just never said a mumbling. He never said a mumbling. Well, what did he do? I know Anybody know he hung his head and died He just hung his head Yes sir Yes, sir. I know. I'm so glad. Friday was the end of the story. He got up. He got up from the grave. Yes, sir. He got up from. Yeah. I know it's one more. This is the one ought to make everybody shout. He's coming back again. He's coming back. Yes, sir. Anybody glad about it? Just put a clap on it, like the old church. Just put a clap on Come on, we got to go. 
Somebody ought to shout glory. Hallelujah. Take your seat if you can. The blood, the blood. Somebody say the blood. Nothing but the blood. The blood came streaming down. It was the blood for me. Drips, uh, drops of blood came streaming down. How many of you all know you are thankful for the blood? Amen. We give God praise and we thank the Lord for another chance to be in his presence corporately. Amen. 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 We welcome our streaming audience, our online audience. These are your announcements for today. As they used to say back in the day, govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. And then what they used to say back in the day, govern yourselves accordingly, because one of these applies to everybody in here. Amen. First of all, we have our mother. You all, can you all believe Mother's Day is approaching? This time is not waiting on anybody. So Mother's Day is approaching. So we have our Mother's Day men's choir. Now, I hear the ladies excited, but I don't hear any men getting excited about that. Because I know we have some men in the house that can hum a tune, even if it's in the shower. So we need some men. Pastor Cedric, every Tuesday beginning April the 9th at 6.30 p.m. See, Pastor Cedric, where will you be, Pastor Cedric? In the choir room. Now, if you all don't know and never had a tour, the choir room is right behind here. So this, okay, where are all the men in the house? Wow, where are all the men in the house? So we wanna make sure we want this choir law filled. There is no reason why all of you all who are sitting out here singing your solos every Sunday morning in, 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 in the pew cannot be up here in this choir law to celebrate our mothers, amen? So we want to see this choir lot full. Now, don't, don't let us pull you next week and say we didn't see you in rehearsal. Y'all know how we are. Our, our um, youth takeover night, yo, we have been having some great partnerships with Elevate, our youth ministry, and our Oasis Children's Ministry. So they're having a youth takeover night, Friday, April the 12th at 6 p.m. You all want to have your youth and your a Oasis preteens there. Now, the youth are ages 13 to 18, Elder Dolores and Brother Darrell give great leadership to that ministry. They have been a blessing, and so we want to make sure our youth are there. And then our Oasis preteens, Pastor Barry is looking for you, ages 5 to 7 only. Now, I'm only reading what's on here, only. Don't bring your child as 8 and say, well, can you sneak them in? We cannot. Okay, so age of grade, I'm sorry, grades 5 to 7. My apologies if I said ages. Grades five to seven, grades five to seven only. So Elevate will have Friday Night Live, while Oasis Preteens will have Vibe Night at the same time. So this night will be packed with games, music, food, and much more. So I want you to text Youth Takeover, somebody say Youth Takeover, to 54244. Four. You have got to RSVP to attend. If you did not, you will not get in. So text you take over to 54244. It's going to be an amazing you take over night. We're having our next baptism on Sunday, April the 21st. So please email. Yes, yes. So everyone who is waiting to be baptized, if you join our ministry, please email our AIM ministry at aim at the Bethel Experience.com to get baptized. We want to see you go down by the waters. Amen to get that final uh, tangible amen declaration of what you've already confessed. So our AIM ministry at AIM at the Bethel Experience. So that's Sunday, April 21st. So you have only have a couple of weeks. So we don't want you to miss that. Amen. Covenant Keepers, remember Bishop mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. We are switching our nights because Bishop and I, of course, will be traveling. He will be honored next week. Amen. At our NAN convention. Yeah, he's on the NAN board, National Action Network, and he's being honored next month. So we are switching our Covenant Keepers to the next Tuesday, which is April the 16th. And we need you to register your children. If you have um, tender age children that are coming with you, please register them. You want to text 
Oasis Fam to 54244 to make sure we register your children so we can have the amount of volunteers that we need to have to cover your children in Oasis. It is not child care. They will be ministered to. Amen? And while we're here in the sanctuary talking about couple stuff. Did y'all get that? While we're talking about couple stuff, your child will be <laughs> in Oasis, and we want to make sure that they are covered. So text Oasis Fam to 54244. But we look forward to seeing all married and engaged couples on Tuesday, April the 16th at 6 p.m., starting with feeding, and then 7 p.m., where we come together in study. Amen. I believe that's it for the day. These have been your morning announcements. Thank you all so very much. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, baby. God bless you. Hate to see you go, but I love to see you walk away. <laughs> All the visitors this morning like, what did we walk into? You walked into a church that loves the Lord and a bishop that loves his wife. That's what you walked into. <laughs> That's what you walked into. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, just a couple of other quick things. On my anniversary, um, we were blessed with one of the great gifts, not only of this city, but in this country, who is a great vessel and instrument of worship for the Lord, Michael Holloway. Michael is just a great gift. If you were here on my anniversary, you heard the way he just ushered us into the absolute presence of the Lord. Such a blessing and I was so honored uh, that he was here with us. He is the praise and worship uh, pastor over at Legacy uh, and I thank God that he was here. This coming Friday at 7 p.m. is Michael, is this his first project? This is Michael's first project. Michael's first project, his album release is going to be Friday uh, at 7 p.m. at Evangel Temple. That's right off of I-10, and it's free. And I wanted to make sure we mentioned that. Uh, the anniversary committee told him we would do that, and I think it's worth mentioning because uh, he is a great vet vessel, and I promise you will be absolutely blessed by uh, his project. And so I want to encourage you uh, to come out. Jeremy, your, when's your project come out? End of the year? All right. I just, you know, put you on the spot, but end of the year. God bless you. All right. Listen, there is a wonderful event. Um, it, 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 is, it is for creatives, uh, entrepreneurs in various fields of technology and the like. Last year, it was absolutely incredible. And it's upcoming. I need a mic. If I can get me a mic from over there, we'll get it. We'll get it back to you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Cedric. Um, and I, 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 I wanted them to come. Thank you, sir. You show up this morning. I see. Uh, yeah, let the mic go. But you are show up. Yeah, I see you. Got your patent leather shoes on. All right. You organ ready. You organ ready. <laughs> It's a wonderful, some of you may have heard of this conference, or this, not a conference, it's an event, a huge event called Think Bold. How many of you heard of that last year? Y'all didn't hear about that? Got a couple of people. Amazing. And uh, one of the co-founders, along with Mo Maurice Henderson, Troy McNair, and my nephew Damian Breland, who's a part of it, they're here. Where's Troy and Damian? You know you can know when you take your glasses off. Oh, yeah, y'all come on up here for me. Come on up. Can we salute? I mean, it's a wonderful event. By the time they tell you about it, you'll know that either you or you know somebody that should be a part of this. I think too often the, the body of Christ does not collaborate um, with other entities and organizations. Uh, come on up, Troy. And uh, nephew, you sharp too. Look at them shoes. Are you sharp? All right. All right. God bless you. 
All right. Uh, it's a wonderful event. Think Bold. And I want them just to tell us a little bit about it, um, who it is here to help. And uh, I, I want to commend Troy and Mo uh, for just the very thought, man, of doing this. It, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Absolutely, man. So y'all tell us a little bit about Think Bold. Bartender service and event rentals. We won't um, hold that against you. Yep, no, don't hold that against me. <laughs> and I'm a part of Think Bowl. I'm actually one of the panelists with the 40 under 40, and I'm here with Mr. Troy McNair. He's going to tell you all about Think Bowl, the festival, and the dates. Bishop, we appreciate you first of all. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Think Bowl Festival and Conference is truly just some of the boldest thinkers in our community. You know, we always talk about we need a seat at the table. Well, the table has been set at the Hyatt for all of us to get in front of different individuals. So when it comes to workforce, when it comes to entrepreneurship, this is the opportunity to network with some of the key folks in our community. And also, we have a huge STEM room for students, you know, so robotics, coding. So this is a truly community family event. Um, I'm proud of this young man also because this young man participated last year and has built a, helped us tremendously when we were broke and uh, he's supported us from day one. And so Think Bold Festival, I think anyone who wants to be an entrepreneur, who's looking for workforce opportunities, go to thinkboldfest.com and you'll see everything on there, but we appreciate you, Bishop. And, and, and thank you so much, everyone. Listen, this is not a fly-by-night thing. Uh, the mayor wrote a letter about it, endorsing. It's, it's not, this is a legit, legit festival. So if you want to know more, and you say coding for students. Coding for students, uh, recording engineering, wow. drama, theater, the whole nine yards. And also Fawn Weaver which is now a unicorn, the CEO of Aquaneers. Yes. She's keynote speaking. Wow. So this is a major event. We ought to do all we can to support those of us whose skin has been kissed by nature's son. When we step out to do things like this on behalf, y'all can do better than that. We, we, we support everything and everybody else but we get suspect when it comes to us. This is a legit festival, and I, I thought it would not be uh, in vain to let them come up and introduce it to the body of Christ. If you're watching by way of stream, I want to encourage you. It's this, this weekend. This weekend, Friday Starts Friday, Friday night. Yes. yes what sir. time? It uh, starts at 7 p.m. at Star. And then it goes through the Hyatt, and then it actually goes through uh, Morton Steakhouse at the Hyatt. What you say? Yeah, absolutely. Morton yeah. Steakhouse. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Then yes, it's, sir. It's, it's Saturday and Sunday? Uh, Friday and Saturday. Oh, I heard y'all were inviting people to come to Bethel next Sunday as part of the... Absolutely. Matter of fact, uh, let's make that happen. Okay. Make it happen. Yeah, let's Bible says you have not because you have not. <laughs> That verse ain't had nothing to do with what I just did, but I thought since I was in church, I'd try to make it match. You know what I mean? Can we salute them and thank God? I really want you to be a part of what they are doing as strong black men. Come on, sisters and everybody. As strong black men pouring back into our, our community. the Lord praise the Lord that's what the church ought to be doing partnering with the community to make sure we are developing young minds amen huh what is it autism this is that's this month right this is also uh, autism month uh, and um, I, I want to applaud and appreciate 
every parent who takes the loving time. Thanks, baby. Okay. Come on. Can we, can we celebrate? Yes. And so, as we've done every year, um, we bring toys for a toy drive. You can bring them during the week and on Sundays. Uh, the boxes will be First Street. We do this every year. And uh, then the last Sunday of this month, let's wear blue and the colors uh, of, of all of those sweet persons um, who have in their family someone who deals with autism. But you bring toys. We are able to bless Mia Bowen does such an amazing job giving leadership uh, in this endeavor with Elijah. And uh, so I want us to be mindful of that. Come on, it's giving time in the house of the Lord. How many of you are ready to give in this place on today? God has blessed us tremendously to do ministry. Uh, on yesterday, when I came up for Leisha's uh, memorial, I came up the elevator and got off where Best Academy is now in session. Uh, we have, as you heard Pastor mention, a youth takeover uh, coming up very soon. We have so many things we're doing. And... We have so many things we need to do. This week, work begins on the steeple of the historic sanctuary. We have to make sure we take care of that which has been stewarded to us by our ancestors. I believe this week or next week, uh, it's on schedule for uh, the HVAC uh, to be delivered for this sanctuary. Uh, yeah, we're looking at trying to put one over in the historic sanctuary so that we can put that sanctuary to great use. Also over there, because we've got artifacts over there uh, in, in our, um, it's not really a, a museum, but it's an archives. We want to turn it into a museum, but they have to have a certain temperature. So there are many things many things that God has before us and it takes the faithfulness of your giving don't don't get caught up social media has become toxic because all people do now is get on there to complain I, I read a quote this past week that said church is the only place people complain but don't contribute Don't listen to people who say the preacher's always talking about money, and he is, because it takes giving to do ministry. You cannot, you cannot do ministry without giving. And so, yes, we talk about it because it's biblical. The Lord said, bring the tithe into the storehouse. Jesus said, when they asked him about the tithe, he said, I ought not have to talk to you about that. The least you should already be doing. And so the tithe belongs to the Lord. The offering on top of that you give unto the Lord. Now, sweet children, listen. Cash App has had a good run. Good run. We started it uh, during the pandemic. I don't think Cash App was equipped for a pandemic and churches uh, using it and so they've got parameters in place um, and it's that's not us every pastor I talk to is doing what I'm doing today where I'm talking about we'll get $25,000 on cash app and because of their parameter parameters they'll hold our money for like two weeks the devil is a liar I'm not knocking cash app now don't don't mistake that but for major organizations their parameters don't really we need that money uh, yeah we need that money <laughs> and so today everybody say today 
Today is the last day you will be able to use Cash App. You can use it today, dollar sign, the Bethel experience. But after today, all online giving will be push pay and givelify. It's automatic on the website if you're watching by stream, it takes you to one of those. Um, but if not, Givelify and Pushpay. Both are apps. You can download them. But today is the last day of Cash App because we can't have them holding our money. I need that money in Jesus' name. And, and so, come on, ushers. Let's, let's prepare to give. What kind of giver does the Lord love? He loves a cheerful giver, but he also loves an obedient giver. Because we know obedience is the key to blessings. Amen. So, Father, receive our gifts this morning. We give them liberally and obediently. We pour back into your kingdom now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give unto the Lord.
the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody want to go to heaven? If you want to go to heaven, just wave your hand and say, what I do, I just want to be pleasing to him. very soon, God, we will go to see the king. We will tell this world goodbye. Now stand up in your servant and grant unto me preaching power. If there's anyone in the sound of my voice that has not experienced the saving power of your son, let today be the day they change their life. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Take your Bibles and go with me to the third chapter of the book of Exodus. We tried to preach this sermon three weeks ago. Y'all didn't let me get past the illustration about the man with his voice. So we're going to try it again. Exodus chapter, Exodus chapter 3. Beginning at verse 7, I'm reading from the King James Version this morning because of the wording that I want, particularly in the last verse. Starting at verse 7, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large land, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. 
Come now, therefore, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people and the children of Israel out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, God said, Certainly I will be with thee. This will be a token unto you that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said unto Moses, I am <laughs> that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, that I am have sent me unto you. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. I want you to look at your neighbor and I want you to say it like you really mean it. Tell him whatever you do, <clears throat> don't count me out. Whatever you do, don't, don't count me out. We are in the throes of college March madness. Ain't much to see with the men, but the women's championship is the day where Don Staley will beat the absolute brakes off of Iowa. <laughs> in Jesus' name. There haven't been many great storylines with the men this year. The women have taken over between Juju and Angel Reese uh, and Malaysia Full Wiley and, oh yeah, and Caitlin Clark. There has been one interesting story with the men, and that is an 11th seeded team won their region. I wouldn't clap because they lost yesterday. <laughs> but the story is still good. The North Carolina State Wolfpack. Deacon Ferdinand Jaluk, so glad to see you. He's been out since heart surgery. So glad to see you in church. Praise God for your healing. Thank God for your presence. The North Carolina State Wolfpack, under the coaching job of Kevin Keats, not only did they win the ACC tournament, but they had the nerve to make it to the Final Four as an 11 seed. If you, if, you, if you followed or if you heard, you will know that Keats was on a banana peel on the way out the door to be fired. Keats before the ACC tournament, and that team had lost 10 out of 14 games. And his termination letter had been written. The only way for him to save his job was to win it all and make it to the dance of the Final Four. The only way they would make it to the dance is that they had to win every game of the ACC tournament. Because of where they were seated in the tournament, they played on the first day of the tournament and had to play every, they had to win six games to win the ACC tournament, and they did. In the midst of that run, nobody gave them a chance. Nobody thought they had what it took to make it out of the ACC tournament, much less make it to the NCAA tournament, much less make it to the Final Four. Everyone counted them out. Yet here they are. Their, 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 their basketball journey can often be a picture of life, can't it? There are those of us who are in here right now who can testify about how we have been counted out before but came out on the winning side. Do I have any witnesses in here? Somebody in here right now can testify that some of the blessings you have and some of the things you have accomplished happen in spite of nobody giving you a chance. 
just like North Carolina State. Every odd was against them. Nobody was betting on them to win a single game in the conference tournament. Even when they got to the NCAA tournament, nobody gave them odds to get out of the first round. Nobody gave Keats odds to still be the coach. How many of y'all can testify? Nobody gave you odds to win. They looked at your background, looked at where you were born, looked at your skin, looked at your education or lack thereof, looked at your history, looked at the things you had been through, and nobody gave you a chance to win in your neighborhood, in your family, in your friendship circle. Nobody gave you a chance to graduate Graduate. Nobody gave you a chance to open the business. Nobody gave you a chance to get married. Nobody gave you a chance to raise that child as a single mother. Nobody gave you a chance to go back to school at your age. But what they forgot was you serve a God who doesn't deal in the odds. I'm going to say that again. What they didn't realize is that you serve a God who doesn't deal with the, uh, as a matter of fact, God specializes in beating the odds. God wants the odds to be against you. God wants people to count you out. God wants people to say you can't make it. God wants people to say you won't survive. God wants people to say you won't bounce back. God wants people to say you'll never graduate God wants people to say you'll never get your life together because when they say that and God does it God will get the glory because when they ask you how you did it the only thing you can say is if it had not been for the Lord on my side. I know I'm early in the sermon, but do I have about 96 of y'all who can testify it was God who beat the odds in my life. Come on, I'm just looking for a few of y'all who can testify that everything I have, everything I am, and everything I hope to be, I owe it all to thee, to God. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him he beat the odds with me. Y'all ain't happy. Look at your neighbor and tell him he beat the odds with me. Look at somebody else and tell him he beat the odds with me. So whatever you do, don't count me. Y'all sit down. I'm just getting started. Nudge that neighbor and tell them, don't you count me out. I, I serve a God who always beats the odds. Come here, Abraham. The odds were against Abraham to have a child at his age, but then came Isaac. Come here, Joseph. The odds were against me going to the palace with my dream, but I made it. Come here, Moses. Moses had the Red Sea in front of him, Pharaoh's army behind him, mountains on the side. The odds were against them getting through, but God parted the Red Sea, and they walked through on dry ground. Come here, Joshua. There were the walls of Jericho all around us and the odds were against us to get inside. But God told us march seven days and on the seventh day, march seven times. And when I tell you shout, shout and every wall will come. I don't know who this is for, but God told me to tell the 18 of y'all that'll scream right now. Walls are coming down. Walls of depression. Walls Walls of discouragement, walls of insecurity, and they're not just coming down for you, but they're coming down for your children. They're coming down for your family. If you would just shout. Sit down. Okay. Oh, hold on. There was one thing I forgot to tell y'all about Coach Keats. 
in the midst of that when everybody counted him out and everybody said he was going to get fired and the termination letter had been y'all going to tear this church up he started getting on such a victory run Zella that they tore up the termination letter wait a minute and wrote him a letter with a raise come here God told me to tell somebody he's not just going to bounce your back but when he bounces your back he's going to lift you up when he bounces you back you going higher 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 high five your neighbor and tell him I'm not just coming back but I'm coming back going higher than I've ever been before all right you. what y'all sit down y'all ain't gonna do this to me again whatever you do don't you count me out I'm coming back bigger better and badder in the in the text in the text that is before us we see a man who could have been should have been counted out he was born to a mother who was enslaved, who put him in a reed boat on the Nile River to try to give him a better life. Pharaoh's daughter finds him and takes him as her own and raises him in royalty. And although he was raised in royalty, somebody need to hear this, I don't know who it is. Although he was raised in royalty, he never lost connection with his people. Hmm. He, he didn't get so high that he forgot where he came from. Not preaching that today. And the evidence of that is one day, y'all know the story, one day he saw an Egyptian beating up one of his brothers. He, he decided, I don't care how much royalty I got, there's hood in me still. He didn't, that's not what he said, but y'all understand. And, and uh, he went and not only interrupted the fight, but he killed the Egyptian and buried the Egyptian. Well, as is in every community, everybody that's skin folk ain't kin folk. There was another Israelite. Y'all don't read the Bible. There was another Israelite who saw what Moses did and out of jealousy said to Moses, uh-huh, I peeped what you did. I saw what you did. Moses got scared because he could tell from the tone in the man's voice and the look in the man's eyes that he wasn't going to let Moses get away with this. So the Bible declares Moses went on the run. He was a murderer. On the run. Ended up in a place called Midian. Connected to a shepherd by the name of Jethro who puts him to work. Get the picture. How do you go from the highest potential in the palace to the lowest job in a pasture? Just like that. Jesus. He was stripped of everything because of a choice he made to kill somebody. He was stripped of everything because somebody saw it and said, you're not going to get away with it. And God comes to him on the backside of the mountain. God, I love your word comes in a fire yes sir Moses comes up to see what's going on with that fire because unlike fires this fire was in a bush but the bush wasn't burning down and Moses comes up to it and he and God have this conversation and don't miss this and God says I've come to you Moses because I've heard the cries of my people and I want to use you to go back to Egypt and tell old Pharaoh in the words of that Negro spiritual, let my people go. Please get the picture. In spite of all that had gone wrong, in spite of all that had failed, God still had something for him to do. And that's my word to somebody in here this morning. 
God always leaves you with something to assist in your bounce back. You didn't hear what I just said. And we need this word today because all of us at some point in our lives experience failures. All of us at some point in our lives experience something that failed. Failure is simply when something doesn't work out as it should. If you take notes, failure is when an outcome is inconsistent with your expectations and the enemy wants to keep you locked in to the fallout of your failure preach boy but I want to tell somebody you are not your mistakes you are not your bad choices you are not a failure if you don't become your mistakes they just become a part of your story did you hear what I said if you don't become your mistakes your mistakes just become a part of your story and what Moses teaches us is that failure can be a path to new possibilities let me show you how I don't keep you long let me show you how if you are going to bounce back and not be counted out it's going to take more than God I know that's the good shout and we can run all around the church. God is the God of the second chance, third chance. Every time I turn around, he keeps giving me another chance. It's not that simple. There are choices we make and parts we play. Are y'all listening to me? Here's the first part you play. Ooh, this is going to get good. Take authority over your insecurity. Okay, can, can, I, can I be honest? Something has always um, bothered me about this Moses story. Something, something Bishop C has always bothered Can I tell y'all what bothers me? Well, I'm going to tell you anyway, even if you don't say I can tell you. Um, we, we know that Moses has a passion for the very thing God tells him he's called him to do. We know it. We know that because it was that passion that got him in trouble. He has a passion to see his people helped and delivered. We know that because it was that passion that made him run, kill that Egyptian who was trying to hurt his brother. So, so we know he has a passion for what God is sending him to do. But when God comes and gives him the assignment, Moses does everything in his power to avoid taking it. So I thought maybe, maybe it was because he's now comfortable where life has landed him because you can run the risk of getting comfortable in positions beneath your potential. Y'all not gonna like this. You can be so lazy that you would rather settle than strive. You, you, you can be so lazy that you don't want to take the time to work the work it needs to work yourself to the place to manifest your potential. I know y'all not going to clap right there. You, you got boss potential. But because you don't want to deal with boss consequences, you'd rather stay in that cubicle. You have intellectual acumen, but because you don't want to wake up and go to school, you just decided you're going to go find you a side job. Is the, is the mic, Josh, is the mic on? Because they're not saying nothing. I don't, I don't. There's a laziness that can come on you where you would rather settle beneath all that's in you. So I thought, well, maybe that's what happened. That's what happened. But then it hit me. Moses has fears that are birthed of some insecurities. Okay, we find out over in chapter 4 when everything he said to God, God wouldn't back off. Moses said, 
you want me to go talk to Pharaoh, we got a problem. I stutter. I can't talk without stuttering. This is deep, Pastor Kim, this is deep. God says, I want you to go and tell Pharaoh. To tell Pharaoh, I got to use the instrument that has a dysfunction. Preach Rudolph McKissick. God wants him to use the very thing Moses feels is his weakness. But come here. But then I also think he, he has developed an insecurity from his help being rejected when he tried the last time. You mean tell me one of my own gonna turn on me for trying to be a help? And now his insecurities of rejection have him living and working beneath what he is called to do and be. His insecurities won't let him take the risk of trying again. Who am I talking to? that the things that failed have so gripped your mind that the insecurity of rejection has you refusing to take the risk. Ooh, don't worry, we may shout for us all over, but deliverance is gonna be in this room. Who am I talking to? You'd rather sit down then risk being rejected again. And he has a catalog of excuses ready, just like us. You, you have rehearsed every excuse for why you can't do it. I got children. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. I got this. I got that. Some of y'all even do it when it comes to ministry. I don't want to drive all the way down there. There's too much traffic. It's nighttime. Y'all, I got to say amen. I know I'm preaching. We have every excuse. And his insecurity now has him isolated in Midian. Baby, let me tell you something. You got to learn how to isolate your insecurity before your insecurity isolates you. Y'all hearing me? Because, listen, where, wherever you think you're limited, hear me, wherever, in whatever capacity of your life you think you're limited, You've got to challenge your thinking as it relates to what you think you're limited in because any unchallenged limitation will always end up producing future restrictions. Some of y'all aren't restricted because you're limited. Some of you are restricted because you have limitation thinking. That's, that's why the enemy wants to keep you from trying. That's why some of y'all ain't clapping and saying amen right now. Your toes, your corns, and everything else hurt. Because I'm stepping all up on your feet. Because the enemy wants to keep you in your limitation thinking. He wants to keep you from believing you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. He wants to keep you limited because if he can keep you limited, he can restrict your future. But how many of y'all know that God is so awesome that God will take the very area that you think disqualifies you and use it to put you in prayer. I'm going to say it one more time. God will use the very area you think disqualifies you and use it to put you where God, as a matter of fact, deficiencies become what qualify you. 
y'all ain't shouting let me tell you something what qualifies you ain't your education what qualifies you are not your connections what qualifies you is not all your money but what qualifies you to be used by God is that you got limitation because God said that's where I'm going to use you that's where I'm going to bless you that's where I'm going to lift you I'm going to blow everybody's mind by using you in the very area that they thought disqualified you. All right. Number two. Ooh, we building the case. Number two, you got to learn to trust the promise of God's power and presence. This ain't no deep sermon. Trust the power. Promise of God's power and presence. Watch this. Um, oh, if y'all take notes, take notes on this part. Then in about five minutes, put your pad down and shout. But here, take notes. Take notes. Insecurity always fosters self-doubt. Self-doubt keeps reminding us of what we don't have by focusing how, on how different we are to others and pointing out how often we have failed and who knows about our faith? I read this quote. I want to take credit so bad, but I couldn't. I got too much ethics. But I need y'all to write this down. Self-doubt is the voice of insecurity. Insecurity has a voice called self-doubt. Oh, I know this is heavy. I feel the thickness in here. Self-doubt then informs self-talk. Because all of us are crazy enough that we talk to ourselves. And your self-doubt, that is the voice of your insecurity, has you in self-talk speaking to you and telling you that you are subject to your past. It will have you talking about what you cannot change. It will tell you that you are positioned in a place where you can't be helped. That's where Moses was. Watch, watch text. Moses, oh, watch, watch Moses. Insecurity, self-doubt. Here comes his self-talk. Who am I that you think I can do this? Don't worry, before it's over, we ain't going to crank and we're going to shout. But right now, I feel like doing surgery. Who, who am I with no degree? Who am I with a criminal record? Who am I with multiple failed marriages? Who am I? with multiple children from multiple men or women? Who am I going to college but dropping out? Who, you, you want me to do what? Who am I raised in a broken home? You, you, you said you think I can do what? Who am I? And I didn't even get out of high school. You said, you think I have the ability to do what? Who am I? And I was a drug dealer. Who, who, who am I? And notice that God didn't answer his question, but gave an answer. <laughs> Preach Rudolph McKissick. The question on the table was, who am I? And the question was so irrelevant to God <laughs> that God didn't even bother to answer it. God answered the question about Moses' doubt with a promise. Moses said, who am I? All God said back was, I'll be with you. 
Y'all missed it. Y'all were looking for something deep. Come here, let me say it again. Moses said, who am I? God said, I'll be with you. Y'all ain't got it yet. Moses said, who am I? God said, I'll be with you. Y'all ain't got it yet. Who, who am I? God said, it don't matter who you think you are. What matters is I know who I am and I will be with you. I want you to high five somebody and tell them God is with you. It doesn't matter what you think about you. It doesn't matter what people think about you. It doesn't even matter what people know about you. What matters is you know that God is. Throw your head back and just scream, God is with me. Y'all ain't saying it. he's with me when I'm broke. He's with me in my insecurity. He's with me in my divorce. He's with me raising these children. He's with me in my cancer. God is. That ought to make somebody shout in this room. If nobody answers your text, if nobody answers your call, the old church used to say Jesus on the main line. Call him up and tell him what you want. Because the line ain't never busy. Call him up. What God was trying to get across to Moses was a powerful truth. Moses, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you feel qualified or unqualified. The point is, I'm going to be there. And my presence is bigger than your problem. I thought I'd get a I thought I'd get a better shout right there. God said my presence, I feel like preaching, is bigger than your problem. How many of y'all in here know that God is sufficient to help you do everything you think you can't do? My girl, my girl Paige Brickers said the other night for University of Connecticut when they won, they talked about her. Listen, she missed two years with bad knees and she came back out shooting that thing and when they interviewed her afterward do y'all know what she said she said I did all that I can so God would do all I can I need somebody in here right now who ain't ashamed to stand up and testify I do all I can so God can do all I can and when I've done all I can I put my hand up and say father I stretch my hand to thee no other help I know if thou withdraw thyself from me shake somebody's hand sanitize it later and tell them do what you can and watch God do what you can that was the wrong neighbor find somebody else and tell them do what you can and watch God do what you can Many of y'all don't know he'll work it out. He'll he'll make a way out of no way. He'll shut doors. Can't nobody open. Do what you can. Ah, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. I will be with you. He said, that's all you need. Don't you worry about nothing. I will be with you. you. You know what God was really saying to him? I'm enough. That's what he was really saying. I am enough. Y'all didn't shout yet. I am enough. Come, come on, encourage yourself. God is enough. Whatever I don't have, God will make up the shortage. Wherever I come up short, I won't come up short. Because God is enough. He's enough to get me through this season. He's enough to pick me back up. He's enough to dry my tears. He's enough to restore my joy. He's enough to give me back my peace. He's enough to fix my family.
properly. He's enough to cover my children. God is it. All right. I'm, I'm done. Yes, sir. And that, that leads me into my last point. Um, that, if you know this to be true, you ought to shout when I give it to you. That God's identity is greater than your every inadequacy. Did you hear what I just said? God's identity who God is, is greater than any inadequacy. In other words, the recognition of what I can't do should lead me by faith to the acknowledgement of what God can do. Huh? Moses, Moses throws out what seem to be legitimate questions, but they are questions masked as excuses. Y'all know we do that all the time. You start asking a bunch of questions, and it ain't that you're asking questions for information, you're asking questions because you won't get out of it. So, so finally, Moses said, well, everything else ain't work. Let me ask you this. When I go down there and tell them that the God of your ancestors has sent me. Who in the world am I supposed to tell them sent me? God said, tell them I am that I am. Hmm. And I imagine Moses said back, okay, I am that I am. You are what? <laughs> God, I love preaching. I am that I am. Okay, you are what? And God would say back, well, depends on where you are when you ask. Y'all gonna let me preach. Moses said, you, you are what? God said, well, that depends, Moses on where you are because wherever you are and whatever you need where you are I am that y'all don't know when to shout let me say it again wherever you are and whatever you need I am that y'all didn't get it yet whenever you need it I am that I am that I am y'all didn't get it yet because in the original Hebrew they didn't have commas and stuff that we have but the syntax of the Hebrew, preach Rudolph McKissick, the syntax of the Hebrew would suggest there's a comma that says, I am, comma, that, comma, I am. I am, that, I am. Let me put it in the modern day language. He's all that in a bag of chips. He, he's everything you need whenever you. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. He says, I am. Never I was. Never I will be. I don't become that. I am that already. Y'all ain't shouting. Because maybe you don't get what that means. That means... If I never was, and I never will be, but I'm always am, that means I have your solution already for the problem you ain't even faced yet. Let me say that one more time. He said, whatever problem is in your future, I am already the answer. Would you do me a favor? Because the devil thinks he's got some stuff waiting on some of y'all around the corner that you aren't aware of. But because you know that you serve the great I am, I want you to shout real quick for the answer to a problem you ain't even had yet. I want somebody to scream for the door 
that ain't even in your face yet. I want you to holler for the bill paid you ain't even got in the mail. I want you to scream for the tumor that ain't even shown up yet. God said I'm already the answer. I want you to scream for the problem your child ain't even had yet. I want you to holler for the challenge your grandchild ain't had yet. Cause God said I'm already the answer. Is there anybody in here who can shout in advance? Don't wait till the battle's over. Shout right. Shout right now for the answer to the problem that has a shot. Find four people and tell them God's already fixed it. God's already fixed it. God's already fixed it. God's already. to shout God's already fixed it he's already fixed May he's already fixed June he's already fixed July he's already fixed August he's already fixed September many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand got much voice but I don't need a whole lot I discovered something Bishop in my study I discovered something and I need y'all to help me close this with the right answer when I get there I am that I am when you read it forward it's a declarative when you read it backwards, it's an interrogatory. I am that I am. When you read it forward, it's a declarity. I am that I am. When you read it backwards, it's God giving an interrogatory that you have to give an answer to. Okay, let's, let's do it as a class. And when y'all do it, you're gonna shout. Remember the interrogatory reading it backwards it's a question God's asking you when God does it for you. Or even ahead of God doing it for you. Reading it forward like you're reading the Bible, it reads what? I am that I am. Now, on the count of three, I want y'all to read it backwards. Ready? One, two, three. Y'all didn't get it. Y'all didn't get it. Let's try it one more time. Let's try it one more time. Reading it the right way, it's a declarative. Reading it backwards is God giving you a question to make sure you know that he is. When you read it forward, it's what? But when you read it backwards and God wants to know if you really believe he is, read it backwards. God said, I'll pay your bills. Am I that? Am I? God said, I'll heal your body. Am I that? Am I? God said, I'll fight your battles. Am I that? Am I? God said, I'll save your children. Am I that? Am I? Now go to three people and tell them, yes, he is. That was the wrong neighbor. Find somebody and tell them, yes, he is. God said, I'll deliver you. Am I that? Am I? God said, I'll dry your tears. Am I that? Am I? God said, I'll lift up your bow down head. Am I that? Am I? Find somebody else say, yes, he is. He is a way maker. He is a burden bearer. He is a heavy load sharer. He is a battle axe. 
in the time of battle. He is the joy of my salvation. He is my way. I done got happy, y'all. I'm sorry. High five somebody and tell them, neighbor, he is everything he says. When he asks you the question, you just got to say, yes, you are. Am I that? Am I? Yes, you are. How do I know he is? Because I, 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 I discovered a long time ago that he makes ways where there is no way he opens doors where there is no door shake somebody's hand and tell them neighbor God is everything God says God is that was the wrong neighbor so turn turn on the other side and tell your neighbor God is everything God says he is. I wish I had somebody. Come on Quinn, let's ride. Good morning sweet children. May the Lord God bless you real good. But is there anybody in here who can help me close this sermon? Stand on your feet. If you know God is, wave your hand. If you know God is, shout for joy. If you know God is, because I, 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 I got a funny feeling and a sneaky suspicion that I got some witnesses who can answer God's question. Am I that? Am I? But y'all excuse me. I've got to put the McKissick remix. If you read it backwards from the Bible, it says, am I that? Am I? Y'all know the McKissick remix, don't you? The McKissick remix is, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he fight your battles? Won't he make your enemies your footstool? Won't he give you joy and sorrow? Won't he give you hope for tomorrow? Won't he dry your tears? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? And because I know that God is because I know he makes a way I'm not gonna wait till the battle is over but I'm a shout right now somebody throw your head back and give God praise that God is with you somebody shout in the middle of your predicament because God is with you in the old church we put it this way he walks with me and he talks with me he tells me that I am his own and the joy we should Lord have mercy as we tarry there I wish you would shout God is with me I wish you would holler God is with me but I'm so glad he's with me better than he was with Moses because I got him another way one Friday on an old rugged cross God I feel like preaching they crucified my Lord they hung him high they stretched him wide he hung his hand in the locks of his shoulder I couldn't do this last Sunday he died didn't he die he died till the sun stopped shining he died till the earth started reeling he died till the flowers started bending he died all night Friday he died all day Saturday but I Sunday morning, he got up with power in his hand, and now he's with me, he's in me, he's around me, he's 
over me. He's carrying me. He's guiding me because God is with me. If you know it and you're glad about it, shout yeah. Yeah. He's with you, child of God. He's with you, child of God. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, sweet heavenly dove. Come rest on your sweet children. Heal us. Make ways for us. Open doors for us. Fight our battles. Dry our tears. Restore our mind. Renew our joy. Give us sweet sleep. Give us great peace. Come, Holy Spirit. That's what God is saying. He said, on the backside, I'm asking you, am I that? Am I? That's why. That's why over my past, God is. In my present, God is. Over my future, God is. Sometimes it's not as deep as we try to make it. Sometimes it's simple but powerful. Over my past, God is. Over my present, God is. Over my future, over my past, over my present over my future now am I that am I because God is the joy he's the strength of my life He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me. Never to leave me. He's never. Come short of his word. I, all I got to do is fast and pray. Stay in the narrow way. Keep my life clean every day because I want to go with him. I don't know when he's coming, but I want to go with him. I don't know how much longer I have, but I want to go with him. Because I've come 
too far. And I'll never turn back. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves up. He promised. Never come short. Keep my life clean. I want to go with him. I've come too far. God is God. God is. Promise. Keep my life clean. I want to go with it. Come too far. Yes, sir. morning I feel the presence of the Lord in this place I don't know who you are this morning no I don't know what the 
condition of your life or the circumstances of your life have been. But I want to tell you this morning, you cannot be counted out. Because what God did through Jesus on the cross of Calvary counts you in. I don't care what you've done. You can have every excuse like Moses. I, I gang bang. I smoked weed before I came in church. I took a shot of douce. I don't care what you did. I slept last night. I don't care what you did. God is telling you just like he told Moses. After all those excuses, Moses had, Moses said, God said, Moses, none of that matters. What matters is I'm with you. And God has come to be with us through the presence of the power and the personality of Jesus Christ. To dwell in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear what I just said? God has come to be with us through the presence, power, and personality of Jesus Christ. And then through the indwelling presence of his Holy Spirit. And you can have that today. Today. You ain't got to go get your record clean. You ain't got to check the boxes. Ain't but one box to check. If you confess with your mouth on the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. So you're in here this morning. You said, Bishop, I, I thought I was saved, but I'm not sure, but I want to be sure. Well, Bishop, I know I'm not saved. I came to church, but that confession you just recited, I've never recited anything even similar to that. But I want to be sure I'm saved, and I'm talking to you. Or, not only am I talking to them, I'm talking to some of you this morning. You confessed Christ as Savior. You strayed away might have been life life was life in might have been the pandemic and you just never reconnected but this morning you're saying the joy that's in this sanctuary the community and then the teaching of god's word is something i need to be under or if you're a family it's something my family needs to be under and you're here this morning and say bishop we want to make a choice to connect with this church today so I'm talking to those who aren't saved. I'm also talking to those who are saved but aren't connected in a church where they're growing. I'm also talking to those of us who just strayed away. You just got out there living life. And you say, you know what? I need to rededicate my life to the Lord. I need to give it back to the Lord. This morning, if you're in any of those categories, and if you're online, stay there because I've got an option for you. But if you're in this sanctuary, you're in any of those categories. I don't want you to wait. I want you to look around and see who's going to come first. This is about you. Grab your personal belongings. I'm not going to put a mic in your hand. I am not going to ask you any questions. It's a structured way for us to celebrate your choice and get you somewhere to get your information. Grab your personal belongings right now and meet me right now at the altar. Don't wait to see who's going to come before you. You make your move right now. Don't be scared. Remember, the Lord is with you. Don't throw out your excuses. The Lord is with you. The Lord said, as long as I'm the Lord, none of your excuses matter. I'm so scared to walk down there in front of people. That is evidence of the devil. Because God would never make you scared to make God your choice. So fear is your first evidence that the devil is trying to block your future. So you ought to break through that fear and meet me at this altar right now. Wherever you are, whoever you are, just begin to make your move right now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you, my brother. Come on. Come on. Others can come right now. Just begin walking my way. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. I see you coming down the aisle. God bless you. God, man, men are coming down the aisle. Y'all ought to be shouting in here right now. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. Come on. Who are you? Where are you this morning? Come on. Bless you. Bless you. 
Come on, you ought to make your move this morning from wherever you are. Just make your move. Be bold. Be brave. The Lord is with you. The Lord isn't waiting on you. The Lord is with you. Even in this moment. And you ought to be bold enough right now to just make your choice. Make your decision right now. Where? Do me a favor real quick. Turn to your neighbor on your right and your left. You done high-fived them and everything else. So you're very acquainted with them now. And even if you know them, give them the privilege of responding. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, have you confessed Jesus Christ as your Savior? Come on, ask them. Ask them. Have you... If they say yes, if they say yes, then I want you to go to the next question. Are you committed in a church where you're growing? Come on, ask them that. Are you committed in a church where you're growing? If they don't say yes to both, tell them, will you give me the privilege of walking with you? Because today is the greatest choice of your life. If they don't give you a yes to both, God bless you, I see you coming over here. If they don't give you a yes to both, tell them, uh uh, child, come on. Let's go get this straight right now. Come on. Wherever you are, come on. If you didn't give a yes to both, then you know you need to make your move. Tomorrow is not promised to you. All you have is right now. You ought to make your move right now. Wherever you are, the Lord is waiting on you. We're going to sing that one more time. And I just believe by faith that a few more people are going to make a choice and walk this way right now. I see you walking in the balcony. Come on. God is the joy and the strength of my life. I see you. He moves. Promise to keep me. God bless you, man. Never to leave. Come on. Never come short. Come on. Keep my life clean. Bless you, man. I want to go with him. When he comes back. Come too far. Come on, God is. God is. Yes, sir. Oh, God is. Yes, sir. If you believe that, lift your hands and just say this last part. God is. God is. God is. Oh, God is. Yeah, God is. Oh, God is. What amazing decisions have been made at this altar today. I promise you this. Your life is not about to become perfect. But I tell you this. The rest of your life is going to be the best of your life. Because of the choices you made today. We've got a wonderful team. And they're going to take you and they're going to get your information. Tell you what your next steps are. This young lady right here in the black, she's going to lead you out and she's going to get your information. So can we shout for them as they go? You just follow them right this way. Come on, let's shout for them as they go. Y'all ain't shouting, I mean shout for them. The Lord has met us in this place. That, that 
those communion narratives in the gospel said when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. My sainted father-in-law who sleeps in heaven every second Sunday in the Good Shepherd Church used to always say, like the disciples, we go out to mountains, mountains and challenges, various kinds of mountains that are obstacles. He said, but if you went out to the mountain with the song of the Lord in your heart, there's not a mountain you cannot conquer. And so I release us to our mountains, knowing that every mountain we face, God is with us. Am I that? Am I? Grace, grace.